Lucila, could you just introduce yourself and tell us a bit of your work? Yeah, I'm a librarian. I'm a director in charge of a very big uh, academic library in Italy, one of the biggest. We have uh, um, more than 830,000 volumes in all. That means uh, almost uh, 30 kilometers wow. of volumes, of which more than half, so uh, 16 kilometers, are open shelves, so uh, easily uh, directly accessible to students. We have um, almost uh, um, 900,000 visits a year, and uh, um, someday we reach uh, 5,000 uh, entries a day. I see. So it's a very big reality. We serve a community of uh, 19,000 students as a basic community. And um, they all uh, are students of uh, social science, uh, um, law, economics, uh, and uh, political science uh, mainly. But we have uh, um, um, students coming from other uh, faculties and yeah. even extra uh, scholars coming, someone, someone of them from all countries of the world because we have a very specialized collections and even ancient uh, collections, so very old volumes, especially in the law sections. And, uh, in, sorry, in what section? In the law section. Okay, okay. So very law. old the collection. Law. Okay, okay, mm. okay. And how old is this library? I mean, how? What's its history? Um, the, in the University of Florence is not so old because it was founded in 1924. But um, there's a tradition which is far older because, uh, in general, our university, so Tuscany University, yes, yes. was founded in the Middle Ages. So it was one of the very first universities founded uh, in Italy and in Europe in general, yes, yes. Um, soon after Bologna and Padua in Italy. But uh, the main um, town um, connected with our university was Pisa, so a little bit uh, far from Florence. And um, uh, we had university in the Middle Ages in Florence, but in the 16th century it was transferred because of a decision of our Grand Dukes, and it came back to Florence only in the 20th century. How important is the book in Italy today? Um, it is rather important, uh, I think um, um, still important, uh, uh, although uh, internet is changing completely things yeah. and habits, and even in the research sector. Yeah. Um, but we keep uh, working on books, uh, um, especially obviously in, in an academic context. Uh, um, even if we have more and more e-books and uh, yeah. <laughs> e-journals uh, uh, and so, uh, but still we keep reading. Um, young people do not read so much, so it's changing for the new generations yeah. and we hope it will not change too much. Yeah, yeah. As far as your trip to India con is concerned, it's a holiday. But uh, what's your experiences of the book in India? I mean, oh, it was uh, rather interesting because um, um, we realized that there's no, in general, we were only in Karnataka and in uh, rather small towns and villages, and so uh, we didn't see a book yeah. uh, bookshops. Book and so it was strange for us okay. not to see that. And I was looking for a, a, a rather um, famous <laughs> new book, yeah, Indian yeah, book, yeah. so the White Tiger. Adita, and Adita. Yeah, 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 obviously, and uh, just for an introduction to yeah. your culture. And I couldn't find it anywhere yeah. because yeah. there's the worst. But, uh, we have a problem in the sense that, uh, you know, ours is more of a oral culture. So in that sense, you know, the book 
or the printed word or the written written word doesn't have such a long tradition in many parts of India. Yeah, I understand that. But you know, now publishing is booming with the new rise of the middle classes and the growth of literacy and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I understand uh, it, and um, I had um, a rather um, nice experience yesterday vi see. visiting uh, uh, in Mapusa yeah, this yeah. uh, new. Um, uh, Other India bookshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, rather okay, interesting okay, to you. see, especially how you uh, support local culture. So and how you support your traditions, your and uh, I mean na the natural natural context yes. uh, and so uh, all the problems of um, natural farming. So the problem of garbage and yeah. so it was very interesting. As as far as Italy and India go, you know, I think uh, we have a problem because most of our work is done through English. Yeah. And large European countries outside of, of Britain, you know, mostly use languages which are other than English. So is there enough? Uh, you know, kind of exchange happening at the level of ideas between, say, countries like Italy and India, as far as the books go. Sorry, I didn't understand. Do, do you properly. see a lot of uh, you know Indian books in your library? I've seen. Yeah, yes. uh, we have, and we buy. We buy, especially obviously on Gandhi, um, on some special topics. Uh, um, gen generally, politics. Uh, yeah, but so they would we all be in English in that sense. Uh, obviously, uh, only in yeah. English because that's that's a problem. We, yeah. we so, so how do we overcome such barriers? What what would be how many uh, you know Indian books would be getting translated into Italian, or Italian books into in English, uh, or say in some Indian language? Um, we have um, um, we have. Um, several books uh, translated into English. Obviously they have to be um, or, or best bestsellers, yeah, so yes. yeah. otherwise they have to be uh, of academic value and yeah. so they translate it. Um, in general, um, if uh, we do not translate academic volumes from English to Italian, only um, only a few times yeah, yeah. because you are supposed to read English. Yeah. That's not ob so yeah. obvious, right. but it should be. So uh, we are uh, we have a very huge collection of English right. language uh, books. As far as the Italian book publishing industry goes, what's its size like today? How big is it? How many books are coming out every year in Italy? In Italy, ha. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard for me because I do not know. The problem is we have so many. The problem and the richness at yeah. the same time. So, is we have so many um, publishers. So we have not the um, Anglo-Saxon tradition of big concentrations. I see. We are a local. Um, we have a very strong local system from all points of view. So, and that's a very interesting experience. And maybe we have something in common uh, with India. I see. And um, so, so many uh, publishers and uh, um, so many volumes being published uh, every day. And uh, for a library, the problem is to get complete control of what's coming up. I see. Yeah. And uh, in the future, what do you see as, you know, would your interest in India grow after this visit? Would you be looking out to? Yeah, um, I think uh, it's it's very string, uh, it's very interesting uh, for me, uh, this visit, and uh, um, I could say it came out from an, a, a book experience, not, not, of, not, of, not a reading experience, yeah. but uh, I came to India having a, a renovated contact with a friend of mine, uh, Alessandra yeah. Labate, who, who was former uh, <laughs> a schoolmate uh, yeah, when, when we were young, young girls. But, um, Who's a Gandhian activist in India now? Yeah, she is an, a Gandhian activist in yeah. India. And um, uh, his father, who yes. is a um, uh, social science scientist, okay. Alberto Labate, donated uh, his library of uh, 4,000 uh, volumes uh, 
all concerning non-violence activism yes, yes, yes. Uh, to my library. I see. And so we um, got in touch again. Yeah, in October we um, we managed to um, catalog. We we received this donation at the beginning of the year, and we managed to catalog all books. And in October we had an. an an open day I introducing see. this new um, important uh, see, collection. collection. And uh, we got in touch uh, again see. with I Alessandra see. and we organized uh, this trip. So uh, books uh, were the connecting, <laughs> the connecting <laughs> meta. All, all the best and I hope uh, you find many more interesting bookshops in uh, Goa and India. Thank you. Uh, so thank you. Thanks to you.